In a recent survey, 54% of you said that you wanted to see my next haul from Decathlon. So, here it is. I've got around 10 items all together. There's some clothing, a few bits of kit, and a couple of pairs of shoes that we're gonna take a look at. I bought them all with my own money. I'm not affiliated in any way with Decathlon. So, let's jump in and have a look. So the first thing I got was this pillow to try out. And it's a stuffed pillow rather than the um, inflatable one that I usually use. I thought I'd give one of these a go. So this is 45 centimeters wide, 30 long and 13 centimeters deep. So quite a decent size. And like I say, we'll give this a go. There's nothing wrong with my inflatable um, trichology pillow. But if you've seen any of my previous camping videos, you'll know that I wrap a buff around it. And I don't inflate it fully because I find that to be most comfortable. But I have seen recently a few people mention sort of stuffed pillows. Um, I think Thermarest do one that quite a few people use. So for $5.99, I thought I'd give that a go just so I can see what the difference is and if it's a lot more comfortable. I also picked up one of their own dehydrated meals. So this pasta bolognese one. And again, I usually use other brands. I was just intrigued to see what this is like, if it's any nicer, tastier or worse, but we'll find out. This was $5.99 and I'll take it on my next camp in a couple of weeks and let you know what it's like. Then I got myself a poncho to try out. So this will go over the top of me with my rucksack on. Really for those sort of showers that come on really quickly in the springtime, just to put in my bag and throw over me if I know that the rain's not gonna last for ages or I think it's not gonna last for ages. So 2000 millimeter hydrostatic head on it. It says large XL on it, but I think they're all one size when I looked on the website. So it's, as you would expect, big plastic square with a hood on it. The sides have got two press studs on each side, so you could roll this out and use it as a ground sheet or a shelter if you want to put it on trekking poles or over a branch or something like that and just use it as a sheet. It's a really large hood on it, but it's got adjustment at the sides and an adjustment strap at the back as well. There's a couple of press studs here to bring it in closer to your chin. And there's plenty of room at the back for a rucksack of any size, really, I would say. Like I say, I'll keep this in my bag for next time it rains and we'll see how it performs. And that was $14.99, which I don't think is too bad for something that's gonna keep you and your kit dry, in theory anyway. Not too bad. I got some waterproof trousers as well to sort of go with that if needed. So these were $11.99. They're just a basic pair. The stretchy waist and zips at the bottom so that you can get your feet through with your boots on. I don't think there's any pockets at the sides or anything. Some of them have like a, a hole where you can go through to the pockets in your trousers. I went for these in a double XL. I find um, decathlon sizes run quite small anyway. And I wanted to make sure that they're definitely big enough to go over me when I've got my walking trousers and my boots on as well. Keep an eye out for these. Next time it chucks it down while I'm out. I'll be fully suited up and hopefully stay dry. Okay, next up, I went for a walking fleece. So this was just $4.99, so I thought I'd give it a go. Got it in an extra large size. And my hope is, it's quite a thin fleece. My hope is I can use it as just a layer to go under all my other stuff when I need it. So yeah, as I expected, I do find a Decathlon sizing quite small. I went for this in an XL and it does fit, but it's, you know, quite snug. You can probably see my moobs, but I think it'll be fine as an extra layer. So next up, I've got a walking jumper to try. So again, went for an extra large size. This was 5.99, so an extra pound above the fleece. So yeah, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but this is like a, it's a really itchy feeling material. So because I've got that fleece, I think I'm gonna send this one back. I just don't like the, the fabric that it's made from. And I know that that'll irritate me and itch me. So yeah, we'll get that one sent back. Next up, I thought I'd have a look at one of their rucksacks because I've heard, again, people saying really good things about the sort of value of their rucksacks and the fact that they're really well made. So this is a 30 litre, I believe, Quechua rucksack. So really a day bag more than anything, I would say. Well, I'll have a, a quick look around it and then we'll take it out for a proper review if it seems all right. So. On the inside, we've got a zip pocket at the top. Pretty familiar design, really. You've got a pocket there for a water bladder. There's a big sort of internal compartment. Then on the front, there's another zip here with a mesh pocket there. So you've got three decent sized pockets inside there, as well as the main compartment itself. On the side, we've got a compression strap 
on each side at the top and then stretchy pockets on each side that I usually use to put my water bottles in. So plenty of room in there, that's a 750ml bottle and I'm pretty sure you could easily fit that one litre bottle in with more, even more than that if you wanted. There's this elastic cord on the front as well that allows you to store things on the back of the pack and then you've got loops on the bottom if you want to strap a sleep mat or a tent underneath and then you've got loops here and here to thread walking poles through if you use them. The back of the rucksack's padded, the straps are padded, there's loops on the straps as well if you want to add extra things on. So we've got a sternum strap that's adjustable, the shoulder pads feel quite comfortable, there's a decent gap at the back so they're not rubbing or pushing into my neck. There is a hip belt as well. But yeah, I mean for $14.99 I think that would be a decent day bag for anybody. You could probably get away with an overnight camp if it's fair weather and you don't need loads of layers and big thick coats. Even if you have to put your tent on the bottom of the bag or it'll probably even fit in one of these side pockets to be fair. My only reservation would be really about the comfort of the back. If it is hot you're probably going to get quite sweaty on that. But yeah, first impressions, it seems quite well made, or really well made for $14.99. And like I say, we'll give it a go next time I'm out on a day hike and I'll report back on it. These hauls are just to show you really what I've bought, how much it costs, where it was from, and give you a first impression or a first look really. Because things like this, you go on the website and you'll see two or three photos and then they expect you to make a buying decision based on those photos. So giving you a bit more of a look. There's a zip here as well. So there's a zip there. So it takes you into a big pocket here as well, so if you wanted to put waterproof layers or anything like that that you can get to quickly without going into the main compartment, that's ideal for that. So yeah, looking forward to trying that one out. Then I've bought a couple of pair of shoes to have a look at really. You've probably seen that I've got some Solomon, I think they're Ultra 3 Prime, they're the trainers, Ultra 3 trainers, but they're not the Gore-Tex ones. But they're really comfortable and really light, I use them in the spring and summer and warmer months. These are some Quechua walking trainers or walking shoes. They're only 11 99 which is the main reason I wanted to have a look at them really. So that's the first pair I got. Again for 11 99 I don't think you can really go wrong. I'll try them on in a minute. But before I do, I'll just show you the other pair that I thought I'd try out. So these are Everdict, which is another one of Decathlon's many weird brand names. These are a lot more breathable, so you've got mesh around there. I went for both of these in a size 10. These were 34.99. So the Solomons I paid 45 quid for, so these are 10 quid cheaper. And again, I thought I'd just have a look. They're a lot heavier than the Solomons if you wanted something light, but the grip seems a lot better. I'm sure you get a lot more grip in those than these. They seem more like a Wellington boot grip, to be fair, which just seems odd. Let's try them on and have a look. So this is the Everdict one. It does feel really comfortable, the sides and the top are really thin and really flexible. I've got plenty of room in my toes. And although the clothing runs a bit small, I'm a size 10 usually. So I went for a size 10 and these fit perfectly. The tongue's really padded. There's lots of padding around the ankle bit as well. I might possibly keep these ones. They're actually trail running shoes, but I won't be doing much running in them, but they should be comfortable for walking as well. So this is the Quechua one. It does feel a little bit smaller than the Everdict one. My toes are touching the end in these. There's obviously not as much padding around the ankle or the tongue area. The materials do feel a lot stiffer as well. So I'll probably send these ones back. So for these shoes, obviously these 11 99 ones were not going to be as good as the 35 quid ones. But these look, feel and seem like they cost a lot more than 34 99 Whereas these really do feel like they should cost 11 99 So... If you've only got that kind of budget for a pair of trainers, then these are probably the best you're going to get for 12 quid. So I would go for them if I've got 12 quid to spend on some. But if you want to push your budget a bit, up to 35 quid, I'm going to give these a go. So I'll see how these perform over longer distances and decent walks. The Salomon ones I've got, I'm going to do a detailed review in a few weeks on all of the boots and shoes that I've got. But the Salomon shoes fit a little bit small and the... Um, don't know what you call it, the insole bit, the foam bit inside that goes along the bottom has moved inside them and then the glue's reset again so I need to fix that somehow. But yeah, we'll see how long these last for over time and give you a final verdict once I've bedded them in a bit. So not a bad haul, in total I'm sending these shoes and the um, walking jumper back 
get a refund on those. The rest of the stuff I'll be using in my upcoming videos. So don't forget to hit subscribe if you want to see how these things perform over time. Drop me a comment below with any questions and I'll see you in the next one.